Welcome to Work Life by Design. I'm your host, Mel Marsden. As a passionate entrepreneur with a desire to create places where people and business thrive, I hope to inspire you to find your place at work and in life so you can live a life by design. You'll hear stories of transformation, exploring everything from organizational psychology to brand and identifying opportunities in your workplace and your life to inspire your human potential. So let's get started. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Work Life by Design. Today, we're going to be talking about what the real cost of taking over a fitted out workplace is versus having something that's purpose built for your organization. So I just want to kickstart by saying that a workplace is really a representation of who you are as an organization. It is somewhere that reflects your brand. It reflects the culture of your unique organization, your values, who you are and what your people do. So your workplace is highly unique to who you are as an organization and what it is that you do and how you're going about achieving that. And so often when I see organizations that have taken over fitted out space, they're doing it because it makes the most sense on paper. So when they're doing their lease assessment and they're looking at the numbers and they're crunching all of these down, taking over a fitted out space probably makes the most sense in many cases because you're not having to worry about the fit out costs, it's quicker to move in and you can get up and running really quickly because all of the things that you need from a workplace are already there on site, ready to go. But what it's not taking into consideration is the intangible costs of putting your business into a footprint and a design and a workplace that was designed for another business. What happens is I tend to see that these intangible costs begin to realize themselves down the line. So what those intangible costs tend to be are an impact on communication. So teams that need to be communicating aren't able to communicate because of the way that the space has been physically designed. It physically creates silos in the business and team A can't talk to team B or team C because there are physical structures such as meeting rooms, the way the core has been laid out how the workstations interact with one another. There are physical blockages that prevent different teams from communicating. Now, I'm seeing this quite a lot at the moment because I'm working with organizations to relocate them out of those environments or to come in and redesign them to enable those communication flows to happen better. People can't see each other because of these blockages that are coming through. They can't see team A and team B. So they're not having that visual connection, which means that then that communication flow and that ability to build relationships within those teams is also significantly impacted. What it also happens is that this space does not look or feel like you as a business. It looks and it feels like the business that was in there before you. And that means that your people are not inspired by the space that they're working in. That space could be have been designed for a utility company or some other mining organization or another accounting company. And their values and their brand and the way that the essence of their organization shows up doesn't fit with the way that yours does. And so it's not inspiring your people when they're coming to work every day. So it's really important that you make sure that the fit is for your business because when it doesn't, it doesn't enable or it doesn't enhance your business. It's not reflecting who you are as an organization and what you want to achieve as a business. And what we've started to see is when organizations transition into these fitted out spaces because they've outgrown their previous site and they're looking to take that next step and expand their business, they start to see that people might actually leave because it doesn't feel like the organization anymore, because it doesn't connect to them about who they are and what that business needs to be achieving. But it also might have an impact on your ability to recruit new talent. And in some of the organizations that we have been working with, this is a big factor for them because they have been unable to inspire and excite people that are coming into those organizations and applying for those jobs because the workplace doesn't look or 
feel like the brand that they're trying to project. And so therefore there's this disconnect between who they outwardly project themselves through their marketing and their website. And then when people actually physically come into the office, they go, oh, this isn't quite what I expected. And it's not connecting. And there's this real disconnect around what the physical environment looks like and the brand and the culture of the organization. So it's really important to get those two really lined up and working together. So the way that we need to look at this is the workplace needs to have a really great workplace accommodation strategy. And when you've got this, it's amazing what it can do for your business. And it goes far beyond fitting in what you believe to be the requirements of your business. So, so many times I have clients come to me and they go, okay, we're looking at these two particular sites here. We know we need about this many square meters because we have this list of requirements of what we need to be putting into our business. But what it's not taking into consideration is all of the other elements that start to underpin what it takes to create a workplace that looks and feels like your business. And that's where your workplace accommodation strategy comes in. It goes beyond putting all of those pieces into a box because it begins to look at all of those other elements about how we can begin to solve problems and concerns that exist within your business. So what we like to think about is as workplace strategists, we're really approaching your business to support you in solving your organization's problems. So those problems might be around communication and information flow. It might be around the fact that your brand isn't showing up, that your culture isn't being really supported, or you're aspiring to change the culture within your organization and the current workplace environment doesn't actually support that transition. We also can give you really great insights into why something is happening because everyone knows that as an external viewpoint, you can often see things far more objectively than you can when you're in it yourself. So a workplace strategist is really coming in to solve those organizational problems. They're problem solvers to start supporting the organization to facilitate conversations because when we can start to facilitate those conversations, there may be other problems that we're seeing within the organization that come to the surface. And you might be surprised at the solutions or the possible ideas that come out of your teams on how they can solve those problems. We also have a lot of tools to unpack the business and then can provide advice and recommendations on how to put it back together in a way that fundamentally supports who you are and how your business works. Because we've got an objective view from the outside. We've seen this by working through this with numerous other organizations around what's worked for them and what would possibly work for your organization to facilitate a conversation, to brainstorm those solutions and look at things from a different perspective because often we're quite blinded by the fact that this is how we've always done it. And we're not aware or cognizant of other opportunities and how we could do things differently that might eventually give us a different result within our business. So your workplace, and dare I say it, now more than ever, really needs to be that shining beacon of who your organization is, what you do, why you do it, and to really enable your people to perform in their roles. It's about providing them with the right spaces, the right tools, the right equipment to be able to connect and facilitate those conversations. And with the conversations that I'm having with the clients that we're working with, is that the reason that people are coming back into their workplaces is not always to sit at a desk and do their job. Most of the time it's coming in now so that they can facilitate conversations, they can problem solve together, they've got that connection back to one another, but also more importantly, they've got that connection back to the organization. This is somewhere that they now feel that they belong and they can see what they are contributing to the intentionality of why we are coming into our workplaces and what they are doing in terms of fulfilling me as an individual as an employee and how as a collective we are then feeling like we're supporting one another and contributing to the success of our businesses So when you're taking over fitted out space you are essentially shoving your business into someone else's And in the process, you are losing the essence of your business, which will ultimately impact on the performance of your people, and it will directly impact on the performance of your business. I've seen it, I've observed it, 
And I'm now working with organizations to help them transition this to something that looks like them. It feels like them. It is them. Now, this might be a process for you over time because I understand the commercial realities of running a business and with growth becomes cash flow and how do we fund this and taking over a fit out out space makes great sense for us in that short term solution as we start to transition and we grow because it makes financial sense. But be cognizant of the impact that that's going to have on your business in the longer term and start to prepare yourself to be able to transition this and to change this over time to further enhance and support your people and directly then support your business. Investing in this will be a significant investment in your business and its productivity and performance over time. So if you would like to start to build the internal capability within your own organization to transform your workplace so that it will enable your people, it begins to connect to your brand, and it really starts to represent who you are and what you stand for, head over to the website and check out the Your Workplace Future Ready program. So I've designed this program to provide you with the insights, the tools, and the knowledge over a seven-week period to really empower you to affect the positive change in your workplace and position you as an employer of choice. It looks at how to reimagine what the future of your workplace is going to look like and what your organization is going to need to thrive into the future. It's going to support you in understanding what the true purpose of your workplace is, what the purpose of your organization is, and how that then translates to your brand strategy and derives your culture. It looks at the way that you have designed the values of your organization and what those behaviors are that we would then expect to be seeing in your organization to know that we're living in alignment with those values and what you can do from a spatial design perspective to subconsciously support and influence people to behave in a way that supports the objectives of the organization. It'll also look at well-being and how you can begin to support the well-being of your employees along with the employee experience and how the entire workplace and the design of your organization can support your employees and to help really position you as that employer of choice. So I hope this episode has given you some food for thought. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you back here again next week. Thank you for joining me for Work Life by Design. If you enjoyed this episode, I'd love you to rate, review or subscribe or all three in iTunes and share it with your friends so we can continue to build this community. I would love to hear from you. If you have any thoughts, questions or suggestions, you can connect with me on Instagram at Melma or send me an email at melissa at melissamarsden.com.au. I hope this episode has given you a few sparks of inspiration so you can design a work life you love.